Yo, what's good? You dub back here again here in 2019. Let's get it. Now, I know some of y'all like me are fans of DC and Marvel. Come on now. I do slightly prefer Marvel over DC, but I do like, uh, I love a lot of the char DC characters over Marvel characters. So it's, 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 it's like a battle, bro. It's a battle. But I was just watching uh, Comics Explained's video dealing with, shout out to Comics Explained, does mad work. Him, Comic Story, and others do mad work, bro. Variant Comics, got a shout out to all of them. I gained much knowledge. Uh, top 10 nerd, all of them. But I was watching his video because the House of X event, okay, current uh, X-Men storyline is kicking off, uh, Jonathan Hickman and whatever, and it caused me to really think about, you know, and I've, I've talked about how the X-Men are a real life story. Now, I might do more videos like this, okay, because I love talking about these things when it comes with fiction. And what people don't really understand when it comes to fiction and in the uh, the underlying themes, the, the concepts that are being presented. Okay. Now, for y'all wondering, wonder, have you read a lot of X-Men? Hell no, I haven't read a lot of X-Men comics. You'd be like, well, then how do you so much know about the concept? Listen, any X-Men fan, and I would consider myself an X-Men fan. Knows that it is insanity when you're trying to deal with the X-Men comics. You know how many lines of X-Men comics have ever been? X-Men Red, X-Men Blue, X-Men Gold recently. Uncanny X-Men. X-Force. X-Men. <laughs> like, it, it gets crazy with the X-Men. They, they got so many damn things. They got so many damn things that it is, the history is insane. But the concept of the X-Men is beautiful. Especially I can relate is myself as a young black male and understand where they're coming from. Now, the X-Men are a, as you know, a group of mutants. For those who don't know Marvel, I mean, there's the whole things and apparently we're going to get an Eternals movie. And there's the Deviants and there's the mutants. You don't have to worry about the Eternals and the Deviants. The Eternals are like angelic, godlike figures that were manipulated with the genes. The Deviants have these manipulated genes and they're powerful in their own right. But they look ugly. And then you have the mutants. These are all manipulated human genes. Okay. The mutants get different powers and abilities as we know. They have evolutions. Okay. And possibly secondary evolutions. There's things like omega level mutants that have crazy powers and whatever. That's the general gist. Most people get the concept. But the thing about with mutants is what it, it, the beautiful thing is any group of people that have been disenfranchised can relate to the mutants. And that's where a lot of people don't understand. And that's part of the reason why most of the X-Men movies don't resonate very well, because they miss the point about what the X-Men are about. And what do I mean? The X-Men concept is a race of people, a group of people, if you will, um, who are different because of their biology in this case. But you can go to, you know, any kind of group of people that they're are made, you know, if they, let's say a group of people who, who were blonde or a group of people, brunette, some kind of physical feature or a group of people with a wrinkle with scars, or, you know, shorter, taller, it doesn't matter what your group is. It's a group of people who are different from the norm. Okay. And they're viewed as a threat. They're viewed as not being understood. They're viewed as, you know, the other. I've said this, and I may do a separate video on fear, but there are two types of fears. There's fear of the unknown and fear of the other. Everything falls under those two predominant types of fears, if you fear anything at all, okay? And fear of the other has been one of the biggest dividing, divisive uh, lines and in, in injuries in human history, if you will, okay? With the mutants, with the X-Men, the X-Men was created by Char uh, Professor Charles Xavier, Professor X, to, you know, unify mutant kind and try to bring great relations between humans and mutants, okay? Kind of on some Dr. King status, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Then you had, you know, Magneto, Eric, I can never say his last name, but Magneto, he had the, initially the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. And the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, they were radical and extremists, and you can say it had a mutant superiority complex. Okay, mutants were above all. And part of that is because of his experiences with, the, with Nazi Germany, being a Jew, and, and 
more of that nature. Okay. And initially, you could say, well, you know, Magneto was such a bad guy, and Xavier, he's doing so well. But the thing is, the mutants kept getting done dirty. You know, there, then there is there is these racist groups. Um, you know, then mutant the the Sentinel program started hunting down mutants and various things. I mean, there's various timelines and stuff that I want to address. But the concept of a group not being accepted in society to the point where the mutant in in you know fast forward where they're multiple times trying to find their own piece of solace. And you have had others, they're trying to get away from humanity and protect their own. And you've had human humans who've attacked them, who've had different programs to, to obliterate the mutant kind. And then, you know, they didn't want hostility, but then you're making them hostile. But do you have some who are, you know, trying to become, you know, Okay, okay, they're trying to be a stopgap measure and trying to be diplomatic or whatever, but humanity keeps pushing back. Human governments keep pushing back. People wonder why Cyclops Scott Summers became more militaristic. People wonder why Magneto is the way he is, why Emma Frost. Because imagine this. Imagine you had a group of people that, let's say you, you had 20 people. And you were the leader and y'all were being peaceful. Let's say y'all it was a group of y'all in school. Okay. You had a team or a club, right? And y'all were just doing your things, but the other clubs kept messing with you. They kept messing with you. They kept messing with you. They kept messing with you. Let's say you were getting bullied. Groups of your people were getting bullied, getting attacked, you know, uh getting lied upon, uh getting maligned to the media, right? How long will it be before your group, it, you know, tries to isolation, you know, become isolationist? And then how long before your group is ready to retaliate and go to war? You see. When you do not respect another group of people and don't try to get to know them and, and, and feel being afraid and, and, and being divisive. Well. Then you project what you project comes back and becomes a reality. What you feared becomes that reality. You make that reality. It's like the whole thing with segregation and such in the United States and across the globe with apartheid in South Africa and different stuff. You feared that these people would do this, but your fear will cause actions to cause those people to resent you and possibly become what you did not want them to do instead of treating those people with respect. You treat people with dignity and respect, they will love you. Not everybody will agree, and there will be some people who do you dirty, but by and large, if you treat people with dignity and respect, they will love and respect you and live in brotherhood, live in harmony. Live in humanity. Most people, this, this is really pretty much anybody. You know what we all care about? There are things we differ and disagree about, but fine. We all care about living a good life. You know, even if we're depressed and, you know, whatever, suicidal, a lot of that comes from issues going on within ourselves or external. Been there with external factors. Living a good life. You know, having our family do well, it, whether it be, you know, mom and dad, siblings, or if we have kids, our family does well, you know, um, living a comfortable, not, not that you, some of us don't care about, you know, the complacent comfort. Comfort is, uh, is, you know, it's a matter of perspective. It matters depending on what you want, but whatever you want to be comfortable with life, you know, living something where you can enjoy life. Uh, doing things that get, make you thrive, make you want to feel alive, you know, uh, you know, have your community be, be in a safe place, be in a place where you don't, you don't feel threatened. You don't feel bullied, you know, being in, in environments that you feel inviting and welcome. We all have that. We all, the, the there's two things that all humans alone that desire love and peace. Now, teenagers add a third factor, which is, uh, acceptance. OK, we all want these things. Every human, male, female, don't matter you black, white, Asian, you know, brown, blue, it don't matter what you are, purple. We all like that. 
No matter the age, we all want these basic things. We all want good food, clean water, basic stuff, a place to lay your weary head. We all want a roof over our heads, you know, or or, or at least uh, if you want, you know, if you're voluntarily homeless, a place where you can quietly lay down and rest your weary soul. We all want these things. And the X-Men is a beautiful, and I mean beautiful, Social criticism is a social critique. To me, it's what comics and fiction are at its finest. Just like um, Animal Farm, just like um, what I'm thinking of, uh, Lord of the Flies, you know, beautiful social criticism. So what happens when you don't treat a group of people right? It makes you take a time if you really analyze and sit back beyond the powers and beyond fantastical stories. When you sit back and look at it, it's like a, a comics explain talks about, you know, and many put like the best X Men story of all time. Uh, God loves man kills. I believe that. I believe that's the title. God loves man kills. Um, with the whole thing, and it wasn't about the powers and abilities. It was about. Someone who is an extremist, someone who is prejudiced to hell, someone who is racist, and the ugliness that he showcased. And it came down to a battle of ideals. You know, at first, you know, Charles Xavier, he was trying to do the rational approach, but William Stryker wasn't having it. And then Cyclops, he used the rational approach, but he said, you see here, you see what kind of stuff he's willing to do. Because of his extreme ideology. The X-Men deal with that. Unexpected wonder like I'm described. Tell me any other concepts I can do with Superman, Batman, the Punisher. Batman versus the Punisher I may do soon. I've thought about that recently. Um, because there's a lot of people that un don't understand why Batman is the way he is. And why the Punisher, the Frank Castle is even is. Bruce Wayne and, and Frank Castle are not the same people. And there's both. I, I'm a fan of both. But it's good that they do what they do. And there's more that I can get into that. All right, y'all. Have a beautiful day. Beautiful night. Peace.